welcome back. In this session, I'm going to teach you about planar coordinate system and the common planar coordinate system used for statewide GIS applications in Alaska. A planar coordinate system is also called a projected coordinate system, and it has linear units. So it could be meters or it could be feet in terms of the XY coordinate system. And it's important to remember that the planar or projected coordinate system is always based on some geographic coordinate system which is based on some datum which has a spheroid so basically what's the assumed shape of the globe so our first coordinate system will be something called the Alaska Albers coordinate system and it will be a cone that's wrapped around the globe and that cone is going to touch the globe in two locations. So this is how most planar coordinate systems work. They're basically some sort of geometry around the globe. So it could be a cylinder touching the globe or it could be a cone touching the globe. So our first coordinate system, the cone's going to touch the globe at two locations called standard parallels. So the first standard parallel it'll touch the globe at 55 degrees north and the second standard parallel it touches the globe at 65 degrees north. So at those two standard parallels where it touches the globe the scale factor is 1.0 or there's no scale distortion. If we're up here everything is too large. The scale factor will be greater than 1 because basically we're shining a light from the globe to the piece of paper projecting. So here everything will be enlarged. And in between these two standard parallels, the piece of paper is actually cutting through the globe and the scale factor will be slightly too small. Okay, so here's an example. Here is 50 degrees north where the cone is touching the globe and that's a standard parallel. So it's scale factor distortion is 0%. And as we get a, south of that line, the scale factor distortion will increase as we go further and further south. Here's our second standard parallel at 65 degrees north. So once again, the scale factor is 0. As we get north, the scale factor increases because the piece of paper is getting further and further away from the globe. So up here by barrel, we might be a, 2% too large or 2.5% too large. And then in between the standard parallel of 55 degrees north and 65 degrees north, the scale factor will be slightly too small. We have two layers that we have from previous video session, the Alaska polygon, which we downloaded, and the Graticule layer which we created using the Create Fishnet tool. If we look at the Graticule properties, the coordinate system is undefined. So it doesn't know what the XY coordinates represent. So for example, the leftmost polygon is a negative 180 something, but it has no idea are those in meters, are they in degree, are they in feet. The bottommost polygon is 50 something, but it has no idea what that represents. And the top is 80 something, it has no idea what that represents. So what we're gonna do is use a tool to tell ArcMap what the XY coordinates are for that layer. And that tool is called the Define Projection Tool. So here we're gonna use this tool Define Projection for that layer, and we're gonna tell it what the coordinate system is for that layer. So it's going to be geographic coordinates and NAD83. So that's in the North America folder. And then in Alaska, it's just simply this one, NAD83. These are applicable to the lower 48, but in Alaska, we only have this NAD83 folder. And then OK. And now the GIS knows the coordinate system of that layer. So now if we go to the source tab under layer properties, it knows the XY coordinates are in geographic coordinates. So now it knows the leftmost 
extent is in negative 180 decimal degrees. The bottom most extent is 50 decimal degrees, and the top most extent is 80 decimal degrees. Okay, so the XY coordinates of these two layers are longitude and latitude, which are spherical coordinates or angles um, for latitude would be the angle north of the equator. For longitude, it would be the angle west of the prime meridian. What we want to do is change and create brand new data sets that are in planar coordinates of meters. And since we're dealing with this big, large area, we'll use a projection that's a cone applicable to the continent of North America called the Alaska Albers projection. So to do that, we're going to use a tool called the project tool. Okay, so the first time I'll run it, we'll do it with the Alaska polygon layer. And it already knows it's in geographic coordinates, North American datum of 1983. And we'll output it. We'll put it in that Alaska geodatabase. And we'll name this new featured uh, class Alaska polygon AK Albers NAD 83. So then we simply click on this button and... It's going to be a projected coordinate system because we want the XY coordinates in meters. And it's continental folder and then North America folder. And it's the first uh, choice in the North America folder. And then OK. So that will create a brand new feature class which is based on a cone wrapped around the globe and the cones touching the globe at 55 degrees north and 65 degrees north. Okay, and we can repeat the process by going to our results window and double clicking on that project tool and then simply changing our input to our graticule and then we'll name our output Graticule AK Albers NAD 83. So our output is going to be called Graticule AK Albers NAD 83, and it'll be in this geodatabase container. And it will have coordinates that are in the Alaska Albers coordinate system, which is meters, and then just OK. OK, so then what we could do is make a new data frame. And we'll name this data frame Alaska Albers. And then we'll add the two data sets that we just created to this data frame. So I can press the control key down to select these two new feature classes. Okay, and the first thing you'll notice is the Alaska Polygon. The border now at negative 141 degrees is no longer straight up and down. Now that border is in this direction. So if we look at that coordinate system, so properties, it is projected, it is planar coordinates in meters based on this cone. So at 55 degrees north, that's a standard parallel where the cone touches the globe. At 65 degrees north, that's a standard parallel where the cone touches the globe. So at those two locations, the scale factor is 1, or there's no scale distortion. The central meridian is where is north, south, straight up and down on the cone. So that's about the center of the state at 154 degrees west, or negative 154 degrees longitude. And at that central meridian, that's where x is going to be 0. So if you go left of the central meridian, x is going to be negative. If you go right of the central meridian, x is going to be positive. And then one last parameter is our latitude of origin. That is, where is y going to be 0? So at 50 degrees north, anywhere at 50 degrees north, in this coordinate system, y is 0 meters. And anywhere at 154 degrees west, 
x is going to be 0. And then we could also turn on our graticule that's in the same coordinate system. So basically, the north-south line that's going straight up and down will be at negative 154 degrees west. So we could use the tool go to xy and input negative 154 and for y we'll go to 50 degrees north and at that location add a labeled point so at that location x is 0 y is 0 and then we can use this pointer so anywhere south of 50 degrees, you'll notice down here our y is going to be negative value. So anywhere south of 50 degrees, y is a negative value. And anywhere north of 50 degrees, y is a positive value. Likewise, if we're to the right of negative 154, x is positive. And if we're to the left of negative 154, x is negative. So this is a, a coordinate system that's used by agencies that have management in statewide applications. So for example, the National Park Service has parks scattered throughout Alaska. So it commonly uses this coordinate system. Or the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has refuges, you know, on the Alaska Peninsula. It has refuge at Yukon Flats, uh, refuge at the Arctic. So it's got refuges all over Alaska. So the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service commonly uses this coordinate system in Alaska. Okay, so in the next video session, I'll teach you about the second coordinate system commonly used in Alaska called the UTM coordinate system.